I'm Seamus the Kilted Gamer, and welcome to my first ever episode of uh, first uh, ever podcast. Excuse me, <laughs> get that <laughs> out right. Games, glory, good times. My first ever podcast. This is my first episode, and with me, I have Danadin. Real quick, uh, Danadin, why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, everybody, Danadin here. <laughs> so that's my little standard introduction. I am a part-time streamer. I do a lot of gaming recordings. I play a lot of classic games. I play a lot of modern games. Um, I also do a lot of miniature painting, which is what I'm probably known for best in my um, Twitch channel. So you can find me as Danadin on Twitch and YouTube. And yeah, that's what I do. Awesome. I, I see you've collected a lot more uh, or, uh, paints back there. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they just happen to find their way into my, my life. But I have been getting a lot of minis lately. <laughs> okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, well, uh, what else have you been, uh, like, painting recently? Um, well, right now I'm working on this piece here. I've been working on this one for about a week or two um, time. It's a giant, it's a adult red dragon that I'm going to be um, – basing and finishing up for a art competition that they're having at one of our local game shops. Aside from that, I've been working on a lot of one-shot diorama pieces. So I'm actually painting a Super Mario one-shot where we're going to be, me and my friends are going to be doing like an RPG session uh, with the Mario characters. And, you know, we're going to have to fight against Bowser. And I'm still trying to figure out how I'm going to do the castle. But, you know, that's one project that we're working on. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well, folks, um, in this podcast, we will uh, be covering a few topics. Um, the, the frame, this is uh, my first episode, so bear with me here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we will cover a little bit of gaming news, talk a little bit about uh, games, what we've been playing, and um, what's going on in the gaming world. And then we will have a main topic of discussion, which is uh, going to be something you don't hear about often or something you don't hear about at all. And then we're going to end the podcast with Name That Game. And uh, if you're interested in that, stay tuned. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, you're going to find out what that's about. I will explain that. So, uh, yeah, there's that. So uh, let's let's get started here with uh, the gaming Ooh. news. Okay. Um, games. Uh, what, uh, what game have you been playing recently? Uh, recently, let me see. Um, actually, I can tell you. Aside, okay, aside from the games that I always play, I always play Risk of Rain, No Man's Sky. You know, you you see you see me with the No Man's Sky videos. Yeah. Um, Dungeons and Dragons Online. I recently started playing a game that came out roughly about a year or two ago called Tribes of Midgard, which is a very interesting roguelike type of game. So you you advent you're kind of it's set in kind of like the Norse Viking period. Where you're like a Viking and during Ragnarok, and you have to collect resources to fight off these giant, um, uh, kind of like um, like titans, and you have to defend your town every night. And eventually, the game gets to the point where it's endless night, and then the town is just overrun by creatures. Oh, it's fun. Wow. It's a very fun game, and it's multiplayer for up to I think four to ten players. Wow. Yeah. So fun um, game. Is um that is that available on on Steam? You said or I play it on Steam. I'm okay. not sh sure if it's on consoles. I don't play too many consoles nowadays. Although I did get an Xbox S recently. <laughs> really? What? Yeah. You, you have a console? I thought you were strictly PC. <laughs> no, well, okay. I'm not strictly. It's just I haven't had a reason to get a console in so long. You know, almost uh, everything that I've been wanting to play is either uh, on PC or it's not worth getting the console for. I mean, I tried to get a Switch a while back, but that's right when the pandemic started and I wasn't able to find one anywhere. <laughs> well, if if you searched out now, if you searched, I'm sure you could find a good one. Um, they have two different kinds: the the uh, original, actually three different kinds: the original yeah. launch, and then one they released uh, shortly afterwards with a longer uh, battery life. Uh -huh. and then the more recent OLED model, which I'm, I'm sure you've heard about. I've I've heard about the Switch and the Switch Lite. <laughs> oh yeah, and the Switch. I, I'm not really sure between the the models themselves. 
Although I do, I did hear that they were gonna, they were already starting to release their their new HD version, right? Or like their upgraded version, their like Fitch Two. Uh, the um, the the uh, upgraded version is the recent OLED, oh, okay, which so that's has better. a better resolution. Um, uh, it looks nicer. Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I would love to get one, but now I have so many little things in my way. Like the reason I got the Xbox was because I have the Xbox Game Pass, which which means me and my wife can play together, or me and my friend can play together. So it, it's good value. I can transfer the games between my PC and my console. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah. So. Um. But out of curiosity, do, uh, have you played emulated games on the uh, Game Pass? Like um, games that mean, have been uh, reported. Uh, you mean kind of like uh, like games that that came out um, like old like console games, like older ones. Yeah, like like for example, um, uh, ha- uh, games that were released on like a uh, Xbox 360 or one of the older Xboxes. Oh, um, uh, depends because they have a lot of different games. Like the Game Pass is kind of like a subscription service. So uh, it has hundreds of games on there. Like I started it, I started using it during the original beta when it only had like 20 to 30 games. And right now it's got like over a hundred, but they, they rotate them more or less, usually every few months. But for the most part, most of them stay for a long time. Um, I don't remember too many games other than some of the classic, I, like I know I, they had Mass Effect and they had um, a few other games on there that are that are older games but for the most part they're they're pretty current usually uh around i want to say maybe like 360 forward hmm. yeah well uh i i asked because um there there's been an an update to uh the nintendo switch online uh, uh, 64 uh-huh. controls there have been a lot of complaints about um like a uh, frame rate skipping uh no like not as uh, much graphics uh, some yeah. have been omitted. Like in uh, in Ocarina of Time, uh-huh. that was uh, released on the uh, Switch Online expansion pack, there were some things missing, and that caused a lot of upset in, in the gaming community. Oh. Um, ha- however, they recently started uh, fixing it, from, from yeah. what I understand. Um, mm-hmm. I guess Nintendo saw you know the people cry out uh, and, 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 and complain, and yeah. which... Which uh, what which is what they should have done anyway, you know, fix the yeah, controls yeah. and everything. So, they they did a little bit of fixing. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> I kind of I kind of feel like Nintendo's always been somewhat good with that, like as a whole. They've always been good at listening to their to their audience base. You know, I, a lot of times I feel like Sony, for the for the most part, has always been like the worst when it comes to that. <laughs> Ever since like PlayStation Two forward, I just I just don't think they've really cared about their community going forward as much but and and xbox was never really it wasn't the worst at it but it really wasn't the best although recently it's been i feel kind of like they're they're trying to push more toward community and that's why they were trying to do their whole cross-platform thing for everything Mm. (laughs) it's nice being able to play with your friends yeah yeah um definitely like uh connecting with people um you know I'm more of a more of a Nintendo guy. I've mainly yeah. Been, so, <laughs> I mean, well, that's the reason why I, I always like watching your channel. Oh, by the way, guys, don't forget to check out Shame is the Kill to Gamer on YouTube. <laughs> 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 um, so I like watching your channel because you play a lot of games that I'm familiar with. You know, I'm familiar with the Zelda series, the Mario series, all of those Nintendo console um games from back in the day because i had a nintendo i had a super nintendo i had a nintendo 64 you know i had a gamecube and then it was after the gamecube where i stopped buying nintendo products other than like maybe the uh, occasional handheld for the most part i just i just uh i kind of fell away from that time because at that time that's when i started moving more into the pc building and building my own systems and uh, you know, MMOs back then, World of Warcraft was huge. <laughs> you know, we spent years playing World of Warcraft, Ragnarok <laughs> Online, Fantasy Star Online. So, good deal, good deal. Yeah. So, what have you been up to lately? 
Uh, then uh, I started recording my uh, next uh, Let's Play. Ah. Uh, been playing uh, To the Moon. You I've, ever heard of that? I've heard of that, yes. Actually, I think I have it. I think I own it. I don't think I've played it. It's um, it's um, It's been out for quite a while now. Uh, yeah. I did a review on it like way back when I first started my channel, and mm -hmm. uh, for a while I didn't want to do a Let's Play series of it because there, there's a lot of dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's, it's a visual novel, right? Like To the Moon, it's a VN style game. Uh, okay, yeah, I do I, have it, yes. I, I'm not fully familiar with visual novels. Um, um, it usually means it's more uh, storyline and not so much action, not so much like... It's like where the majority of it is story rich, and it's like a lot of you're following a character. It fits that criteria. Uh, there, there is little gameplay like you control, you know, uh, like you're you're two doctors, you walk around uh -huh. and, and do stuff, but it's it's mainly dialogue. Uh -huh. well, I guess it would be a visual novel, huh? Well, um, well, I think the main criteria between the difference between a story rich RPG and a visual novel is the format. So like a VN. You wouldn't really be moving your character around too much. It's kind of more just like set splash art and uh, a lot of dialogue on the bottom. But if you do have a character you control, then it would probably be more of a story rich RPG. Ah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I've been gaming a long time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let us move on to the uh, next segment here, the main topic. Okay. Now, right. this is something that you may may not have heard or may have heard, but very little about, okay? Okay. What if Mario and Luigi went their separate ways? What would happen, theoretically, to the canon of the uh, Mario franchise? Now, huh. now mind you, there, there have been some games uh, where, where it's been just Luigi, hence mm -hmm. Luigi's Mansion. Yeah. But... My uh, my point is that if like Mario and Luigi got into some sort of argument mm -hmm. and they just decided to to have enough, yeah, that, that they were done. Mario goes his way, Luigi goes his way. How would you think that would affect the franchise? I would that say way? it's about time. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> I, I, I've, okay, just so everyone knows, I am completely biased on this topic. I am a huge Luigi fan. I've always thought Luigi was the better Mario brother, <laughs> you know. You and me both. You and me both. Yeah, because if <laughs> if the main point of what makes a, uh, the character that their jumping ability in the Mario world, well, Luigi's obviously the far better jumper, <laughs> which means he has a lot more leg strength. <laughs> and not not only that, um, in uh, Mario Galaxy, mm -hmm. when you play as Luigi, he he not only jumps higher, but he jumps farther, and he's a lot faster. Which, uh, when when you first start to play them, it, it could be a little. It could take you a little while to get used to controls. Sometimes yeah. it's a little slippery. There, there's the pros and cons. However, Luigi's still awesome. Mm -hmm. He 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 can still jump higher. He can still run <laughs> faster, and he can go farther. So, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> uh, if, if they decided to like break them off officially in canon, I really don't think it would. I'm not sure what would be the purpose of that. Like, unless they were planning to create some sort of a a versus type universe where they actually had, like, not just different games, but also completely different um, objectives in the in the world. You know, in the in the in the Mushroom Kingdom, because like, let's say for example, Mario ends up marrying Peach, and he becomes the king of the Mushroom Kingdom. And Luigi doesn't want to do that, and he ends up going off on his own, and then he ends up marrying Daisy somewhere else, and then they end up having rivaling kingdoms. That would be pretty cool. And then you can have your whole Dynasty Warrior-type Mario game. With... <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be uh, pretty neat, actually. I could, I could see something like that happening. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, aside from that, it's just, I don't, I don't really think their their characters would really have a purpose to to split off because the entire purpose of their their family in that world is they're literally like the heroes so mm -hmm. it would have to be like what would be the reason that that they broke up and they'd have to explain it really well because they have histories of the you know can back can back stories that yeah. really shape the characters in that world 
So I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure if it was like a rumor that you heard, but I haven't heard of any anything in the works. <laughs> no, no, I, I have. That's just an idea that came up. Oh, it's just an idea, I guess. <laughs> I mean, first and foremost, if that were, if you know, that big if, um, if that were to happen, they would no longer obviously be like the Mario Brothers. They would still, you know, be related, of course, but. They'd be uh, what's that word I'm looking for? Where uh, like you detach from someone that you're that you're close with, like a family yeah. member, or uh, not disassociate, but um, disowned. Disowned. Basically, uh, to a degree, but yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I honestly don't know how I would uh, <laughs> how I would handle that if that were to happen. <laughs> I mean, I've I've seen plenty of twists in other series so i think i'd be fine with it happening i just for me it'd be more like all right if you guys are doing this nintendo you guys got to explain it really well because canon is important <laughs> indeed important and yes and the the perfect setting for that would be in an, in an rpg uh, like yeah. a, another mario rpg okay yep and, <clears throat> none of that super smash brothers stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, I like the series. I just don't and, and don't understand the how people get into the 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 canon so much since they don't really release too much information about what's going on. <laughs> like like the the canon of the uh, Smash Bros. Of the Smash Brothers world. <sighs> I don't. <laughs> there there is canon. It's just it's just very like you have to read it in like the little bio pieces of items, and you have to they have their. The kind of mini storylines in some of them but for the most part I, I don't really think that there's like a huge explanation about why all of that is going on other than master hand and well no i mean uh if, if you recall the, the original releases on the 64 there was barely any story to that at all you fought the yeah. master hand yeah sure but it, it was mainly just you know pick a player beat up. For, <laughs> pick, yeah beat him up and mm -hmm. and now with like Smash Bros. Ultimate, you know, you either have quest mode, story mode. Yeah. And I, I haven't played it, but I'm guessing that's how you unlock all of the other characters. Yeah, I'm guessing. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, um, it's it's become almost a completely different game from the yeah. way it originally was. And I mean, I, I'm still a big Melee fan, so. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm I'm more in favor of the older versions, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, I think Melee was the second one, right? The one that came out for the GameCube. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah that was the that was the one that I played the most. I had the original one for a little bit, but it, I just didn't enjoy it as much as Melee. Melee was the one that really stapled, like, was the staple for that that style. I remember, uh, I remember Melee uh, specifically because uh, my uh, my roommates and I held a tournament for uh, yeah. for Melee. And we even uh, put money in the pot. You know, whoever won the tournament would uh, would win the pot, obviously. Yeah. And you know, everybody chipped in, of course. Mm -hmm. But oh wow, I never, never, ever did that again because someone <laughs> had ill will in their hearts. Mm -hmm. Someone took the, all the money out of the freaking jar. Uh, and yeah, it turned it turned pretty sour. <laughs> yeah. It's, that's, but, uh, that's kind of one of those things that just happens. <laughs> yeah. I mean, other than that, though, we, we had a blast playing the games. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, we used and, to and do that, too. Yeah, we used to do little tournaments for Smash and Halo. We used to do, like, back-to-back uh, -back Halo, where we used to get two TVs and then two consoles, and then we would be back-to-back -back with each other, 1v1s, and then we we go down the list of everyone. It was fun. It was, it was, bad. It was a blast. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> well, I guess we can move on to the uh, final segment here. Sure. Yeah. Name that game. Name okay. that game. So, name that game is a is a little game wherein I have a game in mind and I give you a clue and okay. you guess you guess the uh, game off of that clue. Like, okay. for example, I could give you a a, a a po like a, a line from a from a poem. Okay. You try to guess the game based off of that poem, or I give you a direct quote from, from the game. game. You try okay. to guess the game, etc., etc. Oof. <laughs> All right. All right. So 
put your uh, put your thinking cap on here. <laughs> I don't have any caps around me, do I? No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. All right. Cross the street, I must. Cautious, I should be. If care is not taken, then flat on the street is me. Roger. Oh, oh, yes, yes, I was hoping you'd get it. The moment you said cross the street, I, I was thinking Frogger. Yep, that's it. Wow. You're, you are a gamer. You are a gamer. Hey, I've, I've been playing since the Atari days. Even though I, did, I wasn't born when Atari first came out, my very first system, I think, was an Atari uh, 3200. I mm. think that's what the number was. When we had the old Pac-Man and the old, um, uh, what were they called, Pitfall. <laughs> that was my first uh, first game, Gaming Experience, yeah. Pitfall. Yeah, wow. that was a fun game. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I, I think I got my Nintendo when I was like around four years old. That's I think so. That was in the, the, the late 80s. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, and then after ever since then, it's just been gaming in one way or another. I mean, I started playing Dungeons and Dragons when I was eight. <laughs> so, all right, do we got another one? Uh, that that will be all for now. Okay, um, that's, that's keep it, it uh, keep it short like that. Short, we will right. um in the uh, podcast here, but before we go, go ahead and uh, plug in and and tell us where we can find you. Ah, okay. All right. Well, everyone, well, if you guys are interested in seeing more of my content, you guys can find either Danadin or The Paladin on YouTube, and I'm also on Rumble. Um, or you can find Danadin on Twitch, tv.com slash Danadin, and that's where I, I do my live streams for my painting. However, I am taking this January off, so I'm going to start again in February because I've been working on a few different projects and cleaning up my channel and I'm going to be doing a few new things like board games and and uh, board game reviews, board game uh, playthroughs and a little section I call, um, you know, supersizing the board games or like premiumizing them where I'm going to be getting board games and I'm going to try to figure out ways to make the boards better for for playing in person. So yeah. Awesome. <laughs> <clears throat> well, to all of you viewers, obviously you can find me on YouTube, Seamus the Kilted Gamer, um, on Twitter at the Seamus, that's spelled S-E-U-M-A-S. -E I am also on Rumble, um, same name, Seamus the Kilted Gamer. Mm -hmm. And I have another YouTube channel, Seamus Reviews and More, where I do book reviews and reviews of various products. So, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and also just one last thing, though. I'm also on Minds. If you guys want to find me on Minds, I'm under Danadin. You can also find me Danadin under Twitter, but I don't use it as much anymore. Just to talk to people, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So, thank you for watching this video. Have a good day, night, evening, afternoon, or whatever time it is, wherever you are in the world. If you like what you see, please hit those like, share, and subscribe buttons, and leave a comment down below if you feel so inclined. Stay tuned for more podcast, uh, game reviews, let's plays, and uh, some more good stuff. So until next time, I've been Seamus the Kilted Gamer. Bye. <laughs>